Hey, it's Chris. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Harrow County, but we're not really looking at Harrow County like I did in the review. We're doing something slightly different. Off the Page Games sent me the solo rules. So if you're a solo player, let's go through what is going to make this game also very playable in a completely different way. And that's the other thing you need to know about this is one versus one, the base game for Harrow County, right? You're the family or the protector and you've got multiple on this side, multiple on this side. And then if you want to play this third player, you've got Hester stuck in the middle, literally and figuratively speaking. But in this game, you are playing as Hester, the ill-begotten family member that has been thrown aside for some very bad tendencies for very good reasons, trying to get some revenge against the two factions. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background into Hester in terms of her abilities, her setup, because otherwise, if I give you a little bit of this gameplay, it's not going to make a lot of sense because she is by far and away the most intricate and the most uh, complex character faction of them all. And you need to know that going in. So if you're one of those people who's looking at this base game and going, I don't know if these are complex enough. I don't know if they have enough nuance. And especially if you're a solo player, this is the thing that you need to take a look at because this ratchets it up. You have to understand Hester better as well as the other two factions better in order to actually do this. So let's go into this and I'll give you a few of my final thoughts afterwards. So here in a nutshell, you have the basic setup for the solo game. Now I'm a little cramped in, so it's a little bit close together. It's a little more spaced out in general, but there's a reason I also have the board facing this way. You'll understand that in a second. I've got my three player characters up here, Hester versus the protector versus the family characters. They've got their boards. They're less important board wise right now, but I have them there just for illustration purposes. And then the board itself will be set up here in the early game. But what's important here is you have Hester. Hester is gonna be utilizing different amounts of actions based on her bonfires. And the bonfires are going to be slowly incorporated onto the board by infecting and corrupting the haints and then having two haints, one of each different type, meet in an area, which is typically what can't happen, but only when they're infected can that happen. And then they are replaced, put bonfires in her place on the board, and then this frees up a spot because Hester cannot be summoned to the board unless there is a free spot. Now I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but that's the basic gist of some of the actions she's going to be taking. It breaks it down relatively straightforward here on her board, but she's got several other elements that we need to highlight, but first you have to understand what you're gonna be doing on a turn-by-turn -turn basis because it's slightly different. You're gonna be going up against the opponents of the protector and the family, each are going to be trying to do their own unique objectives, score points by killing haints, and rinse and repeat sort of in the same way. You'll notice though that there are no ability tokens set out on the solo board because Hester does not need the ability tokens in order to gain actions. But what you are going to see is that we have these three very nicely print and played, cut up versions of cards. And these cards have three different colors on them representing the three different areas that you're gonna be dealing with on the map. The shaded hex on each of those cards we'll talk about in a second. What's included with this is this map right here. And what this is, is this is basically the solo board setup, if you will. Very nice, my copy of the print and play, if you will. What's gonna happen is these cards reflect areas on the hex. And you can see now why I have it tilted like this so it lines up a little bit with my actual paper there. We'll line it up a little bit even more so, so it's a little bit easier to see. But the red, the family, the or sorry, the protector are on the outside cards. The purple in the middle and then the blue in the very center. And so that's gonna become important because that's going to affect the placement of the haints as well as some of the locations you're going to be utilizing. And so that's where these cards come in. The hexes on these cards themselves actually represent this circle of actions, meaning whichever dark hex is highlighted, that is where you start on this clockwise circle of actions for the AI system. And this AI system is very similar to the system that you're used to seeing if you're familiar with the base game. Adding cubes, adding haints, moving them towards their objectives. And in this case, the objectives are 
the townsfolk, and the buildings. And so at the beginning of the game, you will pre-populate using these to put down the free folk or the townsfolk and the houses, just one each, in order to give an objective for each sides of the two AI systems that you're going to be going up against. And that's where the movement comes in as well, because when you activate the movement, all of one faction will move one space, one at a time, towards the objective, which is going to be a very big manipulation point on Hester's aspect of things too. Because like I mentioned, how does Hester get bonfires down? How does Hester get closer to winning? Well, Hester gets those haints next to each other that are infected. And we'll talk about infection here in a minute. Infection is a whole nother action that Hester does. But basically the gist of it is, at the start of the game, you choose your level of difficulty in two ways. You choose the number of solo cards, which is also going to correspond to the number Number of rounds you're going to play. So in the beginning round, the beginner level round, you play 18 total cards. Now, it doesn't say you need to choose an equal amount between these, but you can pick and choose however you want given the distribution here. I, for this example, uh, you know, have given six of each of the areas so that you can get just a little bit better sense and are going to be like skewed one way or the other. The other beginning aspect of things is how many terrain cubes because you'll notice that you have still the protector and the family cubes that are going to be utilized that I've put so conveniently up here, but you also have this large pile of other multicolored cubes on the side. Those other multicolored cubes correspond to the different terrains on the board, and you are going to be collecting those each turn, and those are going to be utilized in the tower I've got just off the camera on this side here that's going to be dropping not only for battles, for attacking purposes, but this is also where Hester is different. These cubes will drop out, and this is how you start to infect Haints, but this is also how you summon Hester or infect the Haints in the first place on the board. And so when you drop them through as the action, and this is very specific, you'll notice on the bottom of the board, there's three tiers here. As you progress, you start off with one action uh, with one bonfire, and this is the bonfire that you're allocating to the board based on the hex. Then this means you do two of this action, one of this action, one of this action. It means you start with the bonfire and work your way around. And so then after that, you take this off, this representing your one action, and you play it on whichever action you spot you want. Now you have a potential of about six different options up top, and then two different options down there at the bottom. But the tricky part is on this bottom action, you have to take this last. So eventually you are going to get more bonfire down. You're going to have more of bonfire actions available to you as you progress. And so you're going to have the ability to do a couple up here as well as down here. But that's where I'm saying that this comes in is you have to do this last. You cannot do this and then this and then one of these. You have to do these as many as you want and then this has to be the very last one you take on the turn, no matter how many actions you have, period. And so that's important to remember. And this one you can do either or or both as well. And this is uh, corrupting or infecting the haints as well as summoning Hester. So we'll go through all of these actions really quickly, just so you can get a better sense of what you're doing as a whole before I get into it, because otherwise it'll be really confusing. The first action is just playing cards. You've seen cards probably with some of the other chapters or upgrades, and all of these cards are powers. And so the essential thing is here, you draw up to three cards at the end of your turn. And so you have three cards in your hand that are gonna be available. And what you do, if you choose that as an action, is you'll see actually at the top here, I'll move these roots out of the way because we'll talk about those next. Um, you have three spots here to place said cards. And so you have three cards that can be active at any point throughout the game. And so what happens is playing a card is an action. Utilizing a card is a free action that you can do after the card is down. So it's very important that you have those available because they're very strong actions. And there's quite a few of them as given by this deck. And so that is the first action. The second action is the roots. Let's talk about roots for a second because this ties right into the cubes that we were just talking about. At the very beginning of the game, they suggest taking two of the roots and roots, roots, I'm gonna screw that up many times, so get used to that if you're one of those people in the comment section. Uh, you take two of them every single turn. At the first turn, it actually suggests 
placing one off the side of the board like this. And then you have to connect where the root is ending to another adjacent hex. And there are a few rules with that, and we won't go over that in too much detail, but basically the gist is you can't have them looping back in on themselves, or you can't have them you know, uh, going into certain other areas. There's certain things that they can't do. But for the most part, this is then also how you get your starting resource cubes. And these are the ones that are gonna be going into the center. So for example, I'm gonna be getting a green and a brown. So I would take green, I would brown, I would put them over here in the center of the battlefield uh, that are the ones that you collect when you're either doing this bottom action or you're being attacked or attacking because the AI is going to be very aggressive in this game. They will attack you. They will attack your haints. They will attack your bonfires. They will attack each other. And so there's a lot of um, just keeping track of that um, as you go because it's adjacency on the hexes just like the base game. And so then the second action is if you want to take another action, it's just adding a second or a, I mean a third root in that sense and then getting the resource cube that that would get. So then I would get another green cube to put in the center here and that would be my action if I chose it. The last one is spawning a haint and I can just choose any haint that I want and spawn it to an area that is um, available to me. And so that's one thing that's gonna be slightly different. You're going, well, Chris, why would you wanna spawn a haint for somebody else for the AI faction, right? And so the restrictions on placing these haints are saying you can discard a cube matching the terrain color of one of the player's home hexes. So the home hex there, the home hex there, or wherever their legends may be located currently, then you can spawn on that hex. Now, it might seem unwise, but, you know, like I mentioned, one of the main things you're going to be doing in terms of winning, getting your win conditions to fill up your board is infecting haints. And if there are no haints on the board or there's not enough near to you, well, it's going to be very hard to infect them to get the bonfires out to, you know, get more actions and then to ultimately fill up your board to win. Right. So that's an important step of things. The next step of things involves moving the infected Haints. So if they're infected, I haven't put the little infection things on them. I've got them right here. They are these tiny, 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 tiny little snake guys, and they fit on the back. So um, take my word for it that they're there. Um, I'll, I'll do it in a minute later for the setup. Now, the interesting thing is you can't move, and this is the other aspect of things. If these guys are both infected, you can move them with each other. If they're not infected, obviously you can't move them with each other, but you can move non-infected ones or infected ones into non-infected ones. And so you can have that happen and that's going to adjust things or affect the dynamic of the movement as well on a turn by turn basis. You can't move it into a hex with a townsfolk or a building unless it matches the color as well. So you can't have opposite units in the same hex either. Hester can move on to any hex unless it has a barbed wire token. And that really only applies for the multiplayer game, not really for the solo game, because we're not using, again, like I said, the abilities. And so if you have these in different areas and you have them there and you move one in, that's when you're taking two of these bonfire, putting them down, and taking these off and putting them on the board here. And as you fill those up, that's how you win. Now these bonfire are equivalent to your units. Hester is also a unit. Now Hester, you'll see, uh, unlike the other legendary characters, actually, if I stop dropping it here, has a three on the bottom of her. So she actually counts as three units in terms of attacking. And each of the bonfires also counts as one unit. So that's gonna play a very key role when you're attacking either against haints that are adjacent or determining who gets the bonus cube. Because if you remember from the base game, whoever has the most units gets a bonus cube to drop in the tower when you're dropping. And that's gonna affect obviously how many are gonna be coming out and a better chance to win the battle because they can knock out each other. Well, in the red, not obviously knocking out red, but red could knock out blue and they can get points that way. So you're having to make sure that that also is not happening too much on your watch. Otherwise those factions are gonna score points quicker. Now, I did not mention when you put these bonfires out, when you put each one of these sets out, then you automatically get a new action. And it's represented by bonfires that are placed on the left side of your board to keep track. On the right side are your storage ones for just uh, extra use as you need them. And so then this actually gets used immediately as you play. So you don't have to wait another round to utilize it. You can then fill up another one of these spots unless you did the one down here. And then that's, you know, then you're going to have it for next turn. Uh, but that's the sort of issue that you run into. That's the sort of gist of Hester in a nutshell. Now, I didn't mention 
Infected Haints can still be manipulated by the factions. Infected Haints can still be uh, attacked by their own faction, not in this, more so in the multiplayer again. And they can attack bonfires. Like I mentioned, bonfires are units, so the AI is going to target them unless there is a priority target on Hester here on these cards, and Hester is also out. So that's gonna be a big difference or a big thing to be aware of. And then, you know, the cleanup is also going to be present. Uh, there's two things that you need to know about the cleanup. The brambles in the middle is still king of the hill. And so if one of these guys is still there, they're going to get a point at the very end of the round. The other thing is if Hester is on the same area as one of these, she eats their ability. That's her other special ability. And when she eats an ability, she actually gets taken off because that also fills up one of your slots here. And so maneuvering her onto the areas that these legendary guys are on is very, very good. But that's also the balance is that she's just not going to go around Pac-Man gobbling up ghosts, right? She gets taken off and then it costs X amount of cubes to get her back on. And that's why getting the bonfires on really matters is because when you have uh, one bonfire on, it takes three cubes that have fallen out of the tower to be able to get her on in this final action after dropping the cubes. It takes two if you've got two of these on. It only takes one if you've got all of those off. So she really becomes a lot more powerful at the end, but it's going to be an engine that you're going to have to build as you go along. We'll clear this up and we'll go and we'll show you how this, the couple rounds go so you can get a sense of the flow. So at the start of the game here, now that I've got a little bit cleared, you can see I've got the home base up here for the protector. I've got the home base down here for the family. So what you start off and you flip up two of these cards that determine any, any of your choice, again, uh, the starting locations for a town and a townsfolk or a building in a townsfolk. So this one, it gives you the option of 12 or 13. And so you look on your little map here and you go, okay, 12 or 13 is right there. It's down in the center. So you know what, um, you know, let's make this, let's just go left to right here. Uh, that'll be that one right there above the bramble. And then, you know what, let's grab a red one here and let's go uh, 16 or 22 for one of the buildings. So 16 is all the way over here, 22 is all the way over here. So that's nice that they've actually like uh, done it that way. So you're not having to guess like just randomly. They one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, across in horizontal rows. And you know what, let's make it, let's make it a little bit difficult. Um, no, you know, let's, let's make it over here. Let's make it over here. Um, and so every round, when you start a new round, you have to assess and make sure there's at least one of these on the board because these are what they're going to be moving towards when you have this action cycle when it goes on. So you have to do that as the first part of every single round. Now, these can't be placed with anything else. And so if there's spots occupied, both of them, like 12 and 13 in this case, you have to then draw a new card, which is bad for you because like I mentioned, you only have so many cards and the cards are the game length. And that's what's going to matter. If you can't get your card filled by the end, you lose. So that's what you need to know. Now, at the beginning after this, the next turn of the phase is you're deciding where things are gonna go. So now we draw another card. We'll just go straight, we'll go purple here. And you'll notice it says upper right hex, six and eight. So six and eight, again, if we pull out our handy dandy or we just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can't put it in the legendary. And so it has to go here, but we'll talk about the order in which this happens in a second, because this is where the actions get really important, the order of them. And so you'll notice that the hex, if I don't cover it up here, the hex is in the upper right. So you put your flame, which is my one action right now as Hester this round in the upper right. So that means I'm adding a haint first and then I have my options of six or eight. Well, I can't do it in eight. And so this is also the trick is I get to decide, am I activating either the protector side? Am I activating the family side? Because what I decide to activate, the other side actually gets the cubes. And so let's say, okay, I it's gonna be right here. Uh, right here, this is bad for me already, to be frank with you, because of how close the red are together. And so I think I'm actually gonna activate um, the blue, the, the family side of things, so that it's a little bit better for me. So I actually add two haints, and I can't add a second haint though. And again, this goes right into the badness of the beginning of the game. I can't place two haints down there, so I have to draw another card. So now we're drawing this card, which puts it up here, which actually puts me 
over at the cubes. And so this though, I believe, and this, this could be wrong, I still go off of the previous action because of the first card that was drawn, but now I'm at 24 and 27, which are down here, which are open. So 24 and 27. So I'm gonna be spawning two haints down in 24 and 27. That gives me a little bit more space, uh, but still, this is bad for me from that aspect of things already, you can kind of tell. Okay, so now those, those cards are set off to the side. Um, we take this, and since it was in the upper right-hand corner here, that's the spawning, then we move every unit that's active one space, and then we place one, we'll just skip to this one, and we'll place one on the protector side, and then we'll take our little action back, and we're moving one, they move towards the objective. And so all of them move in one space. Now, now that we've done all of those actions, it's my turn and I have one action I can take if I get this guy off the board there, um, on my particular board. Now, at the beginning of my turn, I take my roots. And so the beginning of the game, they suggest, but we're gonna, we're gonna put it on the board here to give me a little bit more of an advantage. Um, you know what, let's put my roots Let's put my roots over here, um, you know, and let's go this way right now because we need to get, or should I actually go over here and try and get the legendary? Um, this is bad because the legendary is already really close. We'll start right here. And so I am going to get, not these three, forgot to take care of those, but I'm going to have one green and I'm going to have just the one brown. So now, now I've got my roots out this turn and subsequently I'll be starting my roots from here next turn and then removing these two as part of my cycling actions. So what do I want to do on this turn? Well, first let's draw three cards and see what we got right now. Let's shuffle these up real quick. So I don't get the same three cards uh, that I had the starting of last game. Draw, I draw my three cards right here. I've got Hell's Half Acre. Gain a terrain cube of any color each time your root is placed on a mountain or brambles. Because that's really good, because otherwise if your roots are on those, you don't get anything. Uh, only hurt for a moment. Pay any two cubes to infect a haint that's on the same hex as the infected haint. Okay, because you can't normally do that too easily. And then reach. When you infect, you can infect a haint even if it's one hex away from the last root you placed. That's actually really helpful. Uh, because otherwise, sometimes you have to be only infecting right here. So if he was right here, I could get him. So that's something. I'm not sure I want to spend my sole action yet, though, on playing a card. Uh, because I kind of want to get working towards infecting. Uh, but the tricky part is I don't have a lot of cubes to infect with or to potentially go. I would have to drop these two cubes and hope that the green cube dropped through so I could infect right now. So that's one option I could do. I could lay another root that would connect me to the blue, but that would be my one action this turn. And so I have to choose very wisely. I'm not going to move anybody. I don't have Hester on the board. I don't have any infected haints. So those are relatively my limited options. I could spawn a haint. That really wouldn't uh, do me a whole lot of good either. Uh, so you know what? Let's let's start with just making another root. Let's make another root. Uh, let's make it right here. Um, you know what? Actually, I can't go back to the same route, and I know potentially I'm going to activate uh, red next time. And so um, let's make it. Let's not actually do this. Let's let, let's let's risk it. Let's risk it. Let's let's put all three of these. We'll put our action down here, and we will see if we can um, taint or <laughs> taint tainted grail right. Um, if we can infect a, a haint right here. I'm confusing my words together. So we'll drop them. And we actually had all three come out. And so that's great because now I can use both of these. I can spend this. I can spend the green to infect the haint. And I'll grab one of these little snaky guys. These are very delicate. Um, they're basically like little toothpicks. I almost wish they would have like little hats or something. In, you know, like little balloon hats. You could just like pop on the on top. Anyway, uh, so uh, that's back over there. And I still have this cube. But now if you don't use your cubes, you don't have to use your cubes as Hester. Your cubes go back in the center. But this got dropped, so it's off. And so that puts less tension if I'm going to potentially get attacked um, later on. And so that's something to know. Now I've got infected, but that's about it. I don't have any cubes. Uh, I can't put any bonfires down because I need to get an infected haint of the red next to the blue one. Um, and so my turn is pretty much done. And then the cleanup phase, Hester's not on the board. I don't need to do anything else. And so now we go back to the beginning. Okay, do I have one of these each on the board? Yes, I do. Then I'm gonna pick a card. Now this is where the card play is gonna be a little more important because I'm looking at this board and I'm saying, I would really like 
to get a red haint potentially over in this area, right? And so I'm looking either red or purple with those numbers. But the problem is I didn't get all of the cards, right? You only choose about half of the cards in the easy mode uh, to be able to utilize. So I don't know what number sets are going to be in these piles. Uh, and I don't know what's going to be next up. So do I risk it or do I really just want to put something like way over here? Potentially, I'd love to get like this way over there, but that's not going to happen. I'm going to have to try for that for the next spawn point. Uh, but you know what? Let's try for red. I would really like to get a red haint here. So I could just go immediately here and then maybe use an action to get them taken care of with one of these cards as well. So let's pull a red again and let's see what we get. Uh, we got 34 and 37 in the upper right. And so 34 and 37, oh, 34, that's not bad. 37's there, 34, um, but we are in the upper right. So that means I'm taking my action here and the upper right again means that I'm spawning haints first. So activating, so we're gonna put 34, we're gonna put 34 right down over here in the corner. And so then we actually have to do two. We have to put one in each corner for 37. And then we have to activate one step closer. So there, you get to decide though. And this is why sometimes moving is a little bit better. It, the order is really gonna matter. So if I'm doing this correctly, then we're gonna put this guy here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So actually, we're gonna go right here. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna have to put him, we're gonna have to put him here because they're not gonna be able to go in the same areas. So I have to be aware of that. And then he's going to go this way as well. And he's going to go there. So that's that. And then activate here uh, the cube. So we get one blue cube over on the battleground. And then I get my little action token back. We'll put it down here. And then it's my turn again. So now I get to go again. I've got these. I take my roots of the other color. Now I lay two of these down. Now, the interesting thing I didn't say is if you infect a legend you can infect any of the haints from where you are, I believe. You don't need to be next to them. And so infecting them is very, very useful. And that's a rule I'm, I'm not quite 100% certain on right now, but that's one that I think probably could be clarified in the comment section or by the designers very easily from that aspect of things. So uh, this is where I'm also going to get more cubes, right? If I'm going correctly. Now I'm gonna go this way. And so I'm gonna go here because I can't go back to an area that I was already on. So then I take these two off, set these back over here, and I get a green, a blue, and a yellow then. And so then we have our green, our blue, and our yellow, if I can grab them. And then we set them over here in the center. And so now you can see I've got a little bit more to work with if I was to drop them from that aspect of things. Now how am again, am I gonna take my one freaking action? Uh, I'm going to try and do it again because yellow, yellow, yellow is the one I want. And that's the one I want to try and infect. So we're going to drop all of these and kind of see. Actually, you know what? I just realized that uh, none of these guys actually are going to attack yet because ooh, I thought I missed it, but I didn't. So we'll drop these into the tower and we'll kind of see what happens here. So everything again dropped out. You can't see it, but it all five dropped out here. So it got rid of that. And then I've got all four of these that I can utilize. So I'm only going to be utilizing the yellow one again because that's the only thing I need to infect it with right now. Now, let's say I didn't have the right color drop out. I could get rid of three cubes and then get it if it was on the wrong one. So that's still an option. It's just going to cost you a lot more cubes and you're going to run lower on the supply. Now I've got both of these infected. I could even move these little guys. I don't know how that thing is going to stay on there, but it does. Holy cow, look at that. Uh, so that's a problem though, is that's essentially my turn again. And so you're starting to see the limitations of only having one of these down, which is why you really need to get uh, this first bonfire down in order to get more actions on a turn by turn basis. Because now I'm looking at this going, okay, well, this guy is gonna get over here very shortly. This guy's gonna go over here. I have to activate blue next time. And that's gonna be the tricky part. So I don't really wanna activate blue. So I'd really like to get, um, you know, I'm gonna have to. And so again, I'm gonna go with red. So I see if I can get one that's down here. Uh, one and 37. One and 37. Uh, both are which are not great, but not horrible. So let's grab one, but let's see, actually, actually, let's take a look. Uh, this was upper left, so we're gonna be cubes first. So my flame would be there. So I'm gonna activate two cubes, which would be actually red cubes, because it's the opposite of the activation one. 
And then we're gonna be placing down one haint in, we're gonna put it down in 37 here. And then we're gonna move all of the blue one space to the goal. And so you don't wanna let these group up because then it's gonna be harder for you to deal with them. And so there, 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 and there. And so now this presents me with a little bit of a tricky um, situation as well, because I'm sort of having to deal with the ramifications of these actions because I've got one infected there, I've got one infected there. I want to infect that one, but how am I gonna do that? And because there's no token that matches a mountain, I would have to discard those three resources in order to do it. And this is again, where I find myself in a little bit of trouble. And so I'm not gonna take these off. Uh, I'm gonna put these down first. I would really like to infect that, or I would really like to infect one of these guys. Um, this is the tricky part. If I would have uh, had red, I could have maybe moved red instead. So maybe I should have done red there instead, right? Because then he would have been there still. He would have been there still. Um, but then this guy would have gotten the objective and gotten the point. So that's the tricky part of things that I'm not sure um, I'm even good at playing this game. But, you know, it's still fun regardless. Let's see. Uh, let's go. Um, I want to get one of these blue guys infected again near the red guy. So I kind of got to I kind of got to go here. And I think we're going to go, I need to get some resource cubes though. So we're going to go, I just need, I just need resource cubes. See how fragile these guys are though. You know what? I need the root in place. So I'm going to have to go there and I'm going to have to go here then as well. So then I'm going to take my black ones off and then I'm going to do the same action. I mean, this is the tricky part is I'd really like to potentially do one of these others like uh, pay two cubes to infect a haint that's on the same hex as an infected, uh, but I can't. And gain a terrain cube of any color each time the root is placed on a mountain or brambles. Well, that would have been nice, but I can't. And infect when you can infect a haint even if it's one hex away from the last root. And so that would have been probably good uh, last time, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what? I might actually do this one this time. When you infect, you can infect, uh, but no, I can't use that. That's my action though. It's not um, when I infect. Um, so I need to infect it a range. It's not actually an action. Um, let's see, I'm gonna actually just do the same thing. I'm gonna get my two yellow cubes. And then I have five cubes I'm gonna be dropping with the two red ones. And we're gonna try this again. So I have three cubes that dropped out, all three of mine, thankfully. So I'm gonna spend those and I'm gonna infect this little blue guy. And so now again, I'm gonna have a different couple infections of these haints going on. I've got three infected on the board and we're gonna see how well I can do going forward because now it's starting to get a little bit crunchy here. If I can actually do this without it filling. Delicate hands are not my strength, right? So, end of phase. I have nothing else going on, still going on there. Uh, let's get let's get another red. I'm just gonna keep burning red and seeing where we go with this. Uh, 17 and 21, as well as the upper right. So again, the upper right is gonna be adding haints. Gosh darn, this is not going well. 17, and 17 is there. Nope, can't do that one. And 21, can't do that. So I'm gonna have to draw another one. This is going really well. Uh, this is what always happens on playthroughs though, right? Uh, 29 and 33. Now, if I do it like I did earlier, 29 and 33, I have to fill both of those up. And so we are going to, we're going to keep blue, right? Because blue will then move over there. So I'm still going to keep blue, 29 and 33. Then I get to move one towards the objective, objective, objective guy, knock the snake off, even though, um, you know, he should be staying on there. If I can get it back on, my hands are not good with that. And then this guy's gonna move over one, this guy's gonna move over one, and this guy's gonna move over one. And so, um, and I could have done this in any order, I could move them that way. But so this guy is gonna get a point on the point system, and we can, you still keep track of it on the regular point board over here. And so the nice thing, and you'll notice from the base game, is you always keep this pointed at where the haints are in terms of battling. And so if we say this is blue over here, this is the uh, family, they'd go up to one point right there. And the nice thing is as they attack and as they do damage, as they kill each other's haints, these go up and you have to do more haints to get a point. But if you kill, if they kill Hester, 
why they're priority killing Hester is because then it resets their uh, little dial back down to one, which makes it easier for them to get points. And that's why it makes it really important for these factions to be scoring and attacking Hester like that. And we haven't seen too many of the Hester icons on these cards yet, but that's another aspect of things. And then the last point is uh, we put one red cube over here back in the battleground. Now I have no cubes out right now, and that's gonna be the big issue here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my roots at the beginning of my turn. I am going to move this one and move this one. Nope, I can't do that. Uh, I'll move this one and this one, actually. Now at the beginning of my turn, I'm going to move over here and over here. Take my previous ones off the board. I'm gonna get two yellows and a blue. So, now I didn't mention this, but the cubes themselves are a finite resource. So if you have too many stuck in the tower, uh, you will not be able to get more of that kind. Also, you can only have six in the middle here at the end of your uh, storage. So if you have more than that, you're just gonna lose them. You get to pick which ones are discarded and lost, but you still lose them. Now, this time I'm actually going to uh, spend my action over here. I'm gonna spend it on doing moving infected haints. And why this was important in terms of the coloration is I can only move to one of the cube terrain colors that matches. And so I would need one of these, and that's why this became more important, right? And I'm going, okay, I want to get these guys a little separated. Um, I've got one there, one there. You know, these guys over here are going to be okay. But So we're going to move this one here. We're going to discard these little snake guys because we're going to put those to the side because they're no longer infected. Uh, I discard my blue cube over here as used. And then I get to take these off the board and put these here. And what that happens then is that spot where they were, I get to put down two of my bonfires, which is also going to make them a target now from the haints that are going to attack potentially next turn. But immediately I get another action. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to use that extra action. Um, you know what? I'm going to use that extra action to actually play a card here. Let's get uh, some cards going here. Uh, let's say, hmm. Let's say we're going to do reach. What we'll do reach for right now. When you infect, you can infect a haint, even if it's one away from the last root you have placed. So then uh, that's pretty much my turn. Those are my two actions right there. And then I've got one of these spots filled. Now, if I had three colored cubes of the same kind of utilization, I could summon Hester. Now I'd have to drop to summon Hester, but I could utilize them uh, in that sense if I had them. At the end of my turn, I draw up a third card. For sacrifice, place any three terrain cubes from the supply onto this card. On your turn, place one of these cubes onto any hex with an infected haint. Enemies must lose a strengthened cube uh, to remove this terrain. That really doesn't work for the solo. Uh, I probably wasn't supposed to include all these cards. So let's draw another one. Lollygagger, summon Hester with, this, with the same colored cubes, but they don't have to match the colors of one of your bonfires. Okay, that's awesome, actually, uh, because that means, you know, normally I'd have to have three blue cubes to summon her to this bonfire, but I could get three of any cube then to summon her, and I've got two yellow sitting there, so that's actually not bad. Now, that card stays in play. You can have up to three of these cards in play, like I mentioned, and so you can activate any one of them at the end of your turn as a free action, but if you play a fourth, it's going to overlay on one of the other three, so you can't use it again. So there you go. Now, uh, this is off the board. So we need to draw a new card and we need to get a new blue. And I would really like to put this blue somewhere far, far away. I didn't even realize Hester was on the board there. Uh, Hester lurking in the, the shadows there of the forest. Uh, you know what? Let's burn the red deck. Let's just burn it and be done with it. Uh, four and 34. So those are my options for the house. One, two, three, four, or 34, which I'm guessing is down here. So we're definitely going to go in slot four there. So that puts uh, the legendary character way, way, way far away, which is awesome for us. But now we have to do the rest of the turn. And this is the beginning of this. And this is the bad part now on the solo side of things. Now I have two bonfire action cards, right? So when we do this, we have one here and one here. And so then on seven and 31, I have to do two cubes uh, and then I have to do two haints in 7 and 31 if I can do it, and then I have to move them all once. So let's do that for a second. Let's find 7 and 31. Can't do 7 or 31. Well, that's bad. Um, this is a prime example of me not being able to play in these areas, right? Uh, so 25 and 26, 
25 and 26 are right there. So they're these two areas. So those are the haints we're going to lay down. You know what? Let's lay two head haints down right now so that we can get a little bit more variety there. And again, we'll put them so they're a little bit closer to the blue ones, which is going to make my turn a little bit easier from that aspect of things. So now we've got those two down. Now we need to put two blue cubes since we're activating red. So we put two of these cubes down. Then we have to take uh, the move action for red, which is going to put him here, which is going to score a point for red. And then it's going to put also one of these red guys here. Uh, one of these, we don't want these to group up though, because then they move together. And so that's really bad for us. So we're going to move and because it's one, two spaces away, um, I don't really have, well, you know what? I'll move this one here. I'll move this one here and I'll move this one here. Uh, so there you go. That's that action. And then I still have my two actions, but, but this one activated. So what happens is the haint attacks the uh, bonfires, I believe. And so what happens though is it's two units versus one unit. And so what happens is then I get an extra terrain cube of, I think it's my choosing, but let's go with the terrain that it's on just in case. So then I have one blue cube and you gather all the ones that are up here, including the blue and the red. And if red is going to outnumber me, then I'm going to lose a bonfire. And they're also going to score a point. So uh, we have... Uh, two blues, a red, and one a blue of mine. So they don't outnumber me, so I don't lose a bonfire, which is great for me because I really don't want to lose a bonfire yet. And so these are all then lost, though. And my yellow ones didn't come out, so my yellow ones are still sitting in there. And you just saw all of my resources then kind of go away. And that's bad, bad, bad news for me. The only infected haint is over here. And I have all of these other things surrounding me right now. So I'm really starting to be in a little bit of a bind, even though I have two actions and a card now that I can do. So we'll go back and we'll do our root phase here. Um... You know what? I need to get some of these infected. So we're gonna. I can't go back there because that's um, the spot I started in. So am I better off going this way or am I better off going this way around to red? I think I'm actually better off going this way. Um, although I have to start here. Oh, crud. Uh, we're going to go the long way, I guess. And we're going to go this way. And, oh man, this is not good. Uh, you know what? We'll go here because I have, the, I have the action card. I have the action card so I can get one of these red guys. So I'm not going to get three resources, unfortunately. I'm only going to get a blue and a red. Oh, wrong blue. Uh, blue and a brown, I guess, is actually what I'm using for red here. So there we go for that. And then I've got my two actions. Um, this is not good for me. Um, I may, I kind of feel like putting down another root so I can get another cube in there and maybe try and summon Hester then at the same time. But if I do that, those are my two actions, and I'm not going to, even if I can get all my cubes out. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's put Lollygagger out. Let's do Lollygagger as an action. And then let's also uh, do an extra, should I do the drop? You know what? I got two cubes. I got a couple cubes in there. Um, yeah, let's, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's drop and see what, if we can get some of the other cubes out because not only then could I infect using one of the cards, I could also potentially summon Hester if I can't infect, um, either the brown one there or even the yellow one there. So we'll do that and we'll see what happens here. Okay. So we got three cubes out. Oh, uh, but, um, oh, actually that's dark blue. Okay. That's mine. Uh, the red one. Okay. Got rid of the red one, but I have two of my cubes. Um, so I can infect this red haint. That's good, um, but this guy actually gets off the table, so red actually gets a point, so red's at one as well, so we'll have to repopulate that here in a minute at the beginning of the next round, and I have a brown, so I could, uh, you know, that's gonna be the red or the blue, so I can't get the blue, so that one's gonna go back in there for saving it for next round, but I'm going to then infect this haint um, right here because I don't even have three cubes. I mean, I guess I could save my cubes to try and summon Hester, but I'm already using my other card for this one. So I'm not sure if I can use two cards in one turn. Actually, spoilers, update. I found it in the, the rules section here. You can activate each of your face-up cards once each turn at any point as long as it's after gaining cubes from your roots. It's not an action. You slide it forward to indicate it's been used and you can activate it either before or after the cube drop. Yep, yep, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, you know, I could have done both of them if I would have had enough cubes down there in the first place. Now, though, I need to repopulate 
And so we'll see, uh, you know, three or 35. So one, two, three or 35, which I'm guessing is down here at the bottom. Yeah, we're gonna put this guy down in 35. We're gonna put him all the way down there. So red has to go super far. And these red, this red infected uh, haint may go into one of these other blue ones that I'm going to try and infect on this next turn. I'm not gonna get that to stay up there. Uh, so then I'm gonna draw another card. And maybe I drew too many cards on the other time, and, but we'll see. Uh, two and 36. So two and 36, two and 36, but this is the upper left, upper left being putting cubes down first. So I'm going to activate, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna activate, I'm gonna activate, blue is going that way though. Yeah, yeah, let's activate blue. So we'll put two red cubes in the battleground as the non-activation. Then we have to lay two uh, blue haints. Uh, do I have any more out of the bag? No, we gotta go get a couple more right now. And so we have two and 36. So two and 36 down here at the very bottom. And then we are going to be moving them all one space. And so these guys move together as one space. This guy is gonna move, uh, he doesn't actually, can't move into the bonfire, so he's gonna move in there too. But he, yeah, he can move in there. He's, in, he's infected and not infected. Uh, this guy is going to move, they can't move there, so he's going to have to go the long way, uh, probably this way, and this guy's going to move over this way, and this guy's going to move here and group him there. So now you're starting to see where grouping becomes an issue. Uh, there we go, that's that turn, and then it goes back to me with my two roots here. I want to get these two guys next to each other, which is awesome. They're already next to each other. I can move the blue one into the red one, hopefully, so I'm going to need a red a cube in order to do that. So I would really like to get um, something from that aspect of things because I don't have any of those right now. Um, so if I put one root there and I can put one root there and I could even try and infect the legendary or I could really try and summon, um, I could try and summon to Hester and to get her to eat one of those guys too and that would be really helpful. Uh, so I get one of these and one of these as my actions. Uh, you know what? I'm going to gather these back up and I could really use another resource. So I am actually going to place another root and get another. So if I go that way, you know what? Let's go green here and let's put another one in there. And then my last action is going to be uh, moving hate, actually. I think because I need to get these guys off the board. I'm going to move this guy into here. These two guys are going to be taken off the board. This is going to go there. That's going to create bonfires. And you know what? I just realized I completely forgot to have these guys attack last round because that would have changed things dramatically. Now, interestingly enough, um, actually, no, I don't think they would have because it was, no, it was blue that was activating. So they would have attacked. So I would have actually had to be dropping these cubes, um, to see if they attacked my bonfire. So I'm sorry. I missed that attack. I told you there's a lot to keep track of in terms of the attacking back and forth. And they only attack each other. If one of them has more cubes or one of them has more, uh, number. And so they don't attack each other if it's like one versus one here. And so actually there's maybe should have even been an attack there in addition, uh, but uh, we'll see. Actually, I think I did a Hester one, so um, they would have preferentially gone for the bonfires first, regardless. So I'm not sure if you can have more than one attack. Again, that's another good question uh, for the designers to see. Could you have, say, these two attack these two, as well as these two attack these two um, in one turn? I don't think so, because you don't have enough dropping. You're only going to drop once per round in terms of attacks, I believe. So that would have put my bonfire down there. That would have also activated an action for me. Now I only would need two cubes to drop out for Hester potentially from that aspect of things. So if I had the ability to drop right now, I could drop and get two cubes and they don't have to match one of the bonfire colors to get her on the board. And so that's the basic nutshell of things. If I was able to get her here on the board, then she could go over here and eat this guy if she was ending her turn on the same as the legendary. That also then fills up a spot. I get to put one of the other tokens. I don't have one of the wild tokens, but essentially this uh, filling up that spot. And that's the gist of this game through multiple rounds. Now that you've seen it a little bit, let me, let me tell you a few of my final thoughts. Okay, now that you have seen a little bit of the hands-on, a few thoughts on it, uh, having played it a couple times. Uh, it's hard. 
It's brain burning, it's hard, it's thinky. Uh, it's a little bit of a very difficult engine to actually get going. I mean, as you saw, like it was hard to get that second action. And so that's the only thing I worry about, right? Like if, if I started off with less uh, tokens in the middle, actually, you know what? I completely, now that I realize it, I completely uh, screwed up the beginning, right? I should have actually had uh, five, if I was gonna do those 18 cards, five of the terrain tokens in the middle. And so that would have made my life a lot easier. So I actually just made the game a lot harder from that standpoint, realizing that here now after I finished filming. So that would have changed it. It would have made the engine go a little bit quicker in terms of getting some of that out. I probably would have been able to get Hester out much quicker, but that's how difficult it is. You can see of how make it or break it, especially of the mitigation. And I like the, the action system. It felt weird at first with the circular, okay, I'm gonna do this first, but it really makes a big difference of which of those three goes first. If you're moving and then placing, wow, you can really be good. If you're placing and then moving, well, then it changes the dynamic as a whole. I, my only worry would be, like I said, is the engine almost starts a little bit too slow and you can see it sort of get a lot of momentum on the other two sides. Now, not that they scored a ton of points, but that's the other aspect of things I think um, I would be worried about is just the upkeep when you're doing, I mean, you saw me miss a battle right there or potentially two battles uh, with one of those last rounds where they're going to battle each other or they're going to battle me in terms of the bonfire. And so it's a lot from that aspect to keep track of. Not overwhelming by any means, but it's, it's an extra layer of things. The other thing that just concerned me a little bit, the first time I played it through, um, you saw that I got to play a few of those cards, right? The first time I played it, I had three cards that were not helpful at all. Not helpful at all. Maybe like halfway through or even end game scoring, but the first half of the game, completely unhelpful. And so I can't afford, as you saw, how limited the actions are to burn one of those cards. But at least in the rules right now that I have, there's no way to uh, you know recycle those cards, right? And so I was just stuck with those three cards and that was a significant limitation in terms of what I could do. Now I got my engine going in other ways, but I could not utilize those cards for the life of me. And so I'm just sitting there with the same three cards for round after round after round. And that's a slight concern. I could see that needing to be tweaked uh, as a way to have some shuffling, having some refreshing of your hand so that you're not stuck there. Because that would be very, very, very frustrating uh, from a player's standpoint. Like I said, Hester is way more complicated than the other two. And so going back and forth with her, it's not like overly complicated, but there's a lot more rules for infecting, moving the infected, where they can go, where they can't go, how they can interact. There's just a lot more of that. And there's less so of it actually in the solo than there is in the three player game. So that's actually the nice thing from Hester from that standpoint. Um, that's about it. That's about it. Um, the only other thing that I can think of off the top of my head was when you saw me play uh, the cards where I could not fill both of the haint spots. I draw another card and you having to do that two or three times, you can see that you really rapidly cycle through the deck. And I don't know if that's supposed to be that way because uh, like you saw, I went through things relatively quickly. Even at that point, I only had two of my spots filled at the end there and Again, it wasn't that they were close to winning, but I was close to running out of those cards. I only had probably, I don't know, less than half of those cards left. And that's where really the end game would have been more of an issue from that standpoint, rapidly approaching the end game, because I also played on the level that has the most cards, 18 cards. The other levels have like uh, less than that, like 16 and 14. Could you imagine playing that 14? Like 14, and I think the other difficulty that goes along with the 14 is like zero resources in the middle. Like, I don't know how that would be possible. Now, I'm just a bad gamer. I'm not very good at games. I love playing games. Now, I'm not the most strategic. So I'm sure someone out there in the comment section uh, and, and the designers have, you know, surely a ton of tips on how to do this better and how I was messing things up. But at least this gives you uh, the general overview glimpse of what the solo gameplay looks like. And hopefully at least it's a little bit helpful if you're one of those solo gamers who's looking at this as asymmetric factions with AI systems that I can still battle a la Root, only minus the furry creature folk and more of the horror gothic-y um, take you underground and bury you sort of thing. So there you go. Off the page games. Sending me the goods to show you guys in the first place. That's all I got. Stay classy. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm sure they're going to be active in the comment section down below and I'm sure I messed up a bunch as well. So uh, don't take what I did for 100% grain of salt, but just to give you the best overview that I can. So, <laughs> making a fool of myself on a daily basis. There you go. See you guys around.
Do the YouTube thing if you like too.